Typhoid fever is caused by Salmonella enterica species Typhi and Paratyphi. It's typically seen amongst travelers, particularly from the subcontinent. Human beings are the only reservoir for the disease, and transmission is by the fecal oral route. In terms of the pathogenesis of the disorder, patients typically ingest the organism and a high bacterial load is required unless a patient is on an acid suppressing drug such as a proton pump inhibitor which reduces stomach acidity. Once the organism has entered the patient's small intestine it penetrates into the submucosa in a number of ways. It can penetrate via antigen presenting cells in the mucose associated lymphoid system or directly into the cell itself. Typically one sees proliferation and hypertrophy of lymphoid tissue in the intestine known as the Peyer's patches with increased amounts of lymphocytes and neutrophils. Rarely this tissue can actually necrose uh, leading to abdominal perforation and systemic side effects of the actual disease. The incubation period for the actual disease is on average three weeks. The organisms first are located in the bowel but then may spread via the bloodstream to tissues such as the liver, the spleen and the bone marrow. Salmonella typhi accounts for the majority of disease but Salmonella paratyphi, which is found in different parts of the world depending on the serotype A, B or C that's involved is gaining prevalence due to the vaccine that's available against Salmonella typhi. There are actually a number of vaccines that are available for Salmonella typhi. There is a live oral vaccination and a capsular polysaccharide vaccination that both have an efficacy of about 50 to 80%. A newer conjugate vaccine has a greater efficacy of about 90%. Typically, these vaccinations are required every two to three years. So, typhoid fever has a number of characteristics to its disease. Typically, patients complain initially of a rising high fever with rigors. Patients may then develop abdominal pain and a particular rash known as rose spots. These are faint erythematous or salmon maculopapular lesions particularly seen on the abdomen and upper body. In the third week of the illness, if the actual illness spreads from the GI tract, one can see involvement in the liver and in the spleen, where hepatosplenomegaly may be seen, along with a bacteremia and peritonitis. Eventually, septic shock may occur. In terms of investigations, patients may be anemic, they may have a low white cell count and also a low platelet count. Liver function tests may reveal elevated transaminases and patients may also have positive stool cultures, positive blood cultures and also positive bone marrow biopsy cultures. Blood cultures tend to be positive in about 50 to 75% of patients while stool cultures are, tend to be positive in a lower amount. Up to 40% have a positive stool culture. You can also culture uh, the row spots, which are those skin lesions, and they will also turn positive for Salmonella itself. Weidel's test was a test that was previously designed to test for the O and H antigens of the lipopolysaccharide of the organism, but it's a rather unreliable test and is not used in practice. Treatment is with antibiotic therapy and supportive care. With increasing resistance to fluoroquinolones, more and more so we are seeing now that we need to use drugs such as keftriaxone in the treatment of typhoid. Steroids may also be used in severe cases of disease. Rarely, in a small amount of cases, do patients develop chronic carriage of the actual organism. This is defined as carrying the organism in your stool or in your urine for more than 12 months. Again, treatment in this case is with antibiotics and fluoroquinolones tend to be preferred here. So that's typhoid fever in summary. Just recall that it's caused by those species Enterica typhi and Paratyphi 
and that it has particular features on examination in terms of both abdominal symptoms, but it can also have diffuse systemic symptoms that one wouldn't consider, such as a cough, um, problems with the liver and spleen, and it can also cause endocarditis. In your clinical vignette in the exam, they may give you the actual rash and ask you about that and try and get you to think about what organism in terms of the Enterobacteraceae would be causing it.